Starting in the 9th century AD, the Carolingian world of Western Europe began to fragment in the face of external threats. Islamic, Magyar, and Viking raiding and invasions had taken a toll on the stability of the empire. In the turmoil that ensued, many problems hindered the ability of the Carolingian monarchy to defend its empire. Distances were too great for its forces to traverse, and its army was too small and disorderly to be properly led against threats. To make matters worse, communication in the period was too primitive for the monarchy to respond in time when help was needed. Military responsibility fell more and more to the aristocracy, who were better able to protect their regions from the sudden attacks or raids by foreign powers. The response from Western Europe to the wave of foreign invasions was the creation of a highly developed social organization known to history as feudalism. Feudalism contained two component parts, a personal element called vassalage and a property element called the benefice. The system of vassalage was derived from Germanic society by the practice of comitatus. Comitatus involved a warrior chief attracting followers to himself by the duty of military service. In this practice, the relationship between chief and followers was one between social equals. By the 8th century, one who served a lord in a military capacity was known as a vassal. Benefice was feudalism's property component and it ultimately became fused with the personal element of vassalage. In the late Roman period, it became customary for the owners of extensive private lands to hire retainers to work for them, with the lord providing a grant of land or benefice as payment. In the chaos of the early Middle Ages, these privately owned parcels of land became the medieval manor, which were the hereditary possessions of Germanic lords. From the 7th century onward, these manors were increasingly worked by serfs rather than peasants. Serfs were poor agriculturalists who traded manual labor for protection against Muslim, Viking, and Magyar raiders. This economic arrangement led to the development of a new weapon system in medieval Western Europe, the heavy cavalrymen, and eventually, the knight. Because of the expense of the knight's full suit of armor and the time and practice required to become a skilled horseman, the medieval heavy cavalrymen needed to be economically supported. Furthermore, lords who wanted the services of this new and expensive weapon system were required to grant each vassal a benefice. This piece of land from their hereditary possessions would provide the vassal with economic support. In return for this grant of land, the vassal provided the lord with military service. By the 9th century, the benefice evolved into what became known as the fief, as it acquired new characteristics involving the exercise of political power. The fief differed from the benefice in that the vassal enjoyed the rights of jurisdiction of political and legal authority within his property. Heavy cavalry in the early medieval period was gradually evolving. Merovingian heavy cavalry present at the decisive Battle of Tour in 732 used throwing axes from horseback and released their spears during passes. But during the reign of the age's most powerful monarch, Charlemagne, and improved heavy shock cavalry made its appearance in Western Europe. They utilized larger horses, standardized arms and armor, and emphasized the sword and lance as its primary weapons. The rise of medieval heavy cavalry can be traced to the technological evolution of arms and armor, with the centerpiece of the knight's offensive arsenal being his sword. The evolution of the cavalry sword in Europe dates back to the Roman Spatha and Germanic swords of antiquity, long narrow weapons designed for slashing rather than thrusting. In the Germanic world, the sword was a symbol of manhood, sometimes given to a boy at birth or at his naming. It was also presented to him as a symbol of his rite of passage from child to warrior. These weapons were often given personal names and became heirlooms passed on from generation to generation. In Charlemagne's many capitularies that refer to weapons, the sword is always prominent and was often represented as the cavalryman's primary weapon. Evidence of the priority of the sword in the Carolingian cavalryman's arsenal can be seen in the disappearance of the throwing axe and single-edged sacks in the 8th century. These weapons were replaced by the 44-inch longsword, better suited by its reach for combat on horseback. The stirrup-stabilized heavy cavalryman also made his appearance during the reign of Charlemagne, but not in sufficient numbers to affect cavalry tactics. The stirrup might have been the single most important factor in the rise of the mounted knight as the dominant weapon of the medieval period. 
The real impact of the stirrup on medieval warfare would not be felt until after Charlemagne's death in 814. The stirrup, which was believed to have originated in China, was probably introduced to the West sometime before the 8th century, either by the Byzantines, the Muslims, or the Avars. When combined with the saddle built up at the pommel and cantle for longitudinal support, the stirrup fused rider and horse together as one. Rather than thrusting out himself, the rider now held his weapon at rest in the crook of his arm, using the combined weight of his body and his charging mount to deliver a blow of unprecedented ferocity. Utilizing the energy of the horse and the newfound stability provided by the stirrup, this new heavy cavalry was able to secure a position at the top of the social and battlefield hierarchy. The Franks became famous for the fearsome charge of their heavy cavalry, and their tactics spread from France to all of Western Europe. The balance of power on the field of battle was now altered, and the change was soon apparent to friend and foe alike. It appeared at a time when their armies could no longer field capable heavy infantry to confront opposing enemy lancers. The knight's armor was also gradually changing, with the male shirt lengthened to cover the hips, and male greaves or shos also appearing. The round shield gave way to a kite-shaped shield in order to protect the rider's legs. These changes offered superior protection for the knight against his unmounted foes, while giving him the necessary reach to attack them. By the 11th century, all of the essential elements of knightly equipment were in place. The heavily armored knight would stay the most dominant force on the battlefield for centuries.